The Dolphins dramatically changed direction in 1983 when they made quarterback Dan Marino the 27th pick of the NFL draft. Now we had Dan Marino ranked number two right behind Elway. Elway was number one. Dan had a great junior year at Pittsburgh, and then his senior year wasn't quite as good. And I think that's why he fell way back in the first round in the draft. We were very, very happy when he slid to us to the 27th pick in the first round. It was fortunate for me because I came in and I was able to play early, but I had a lot of help from, from the veterans and the people that were here. The thing I really liked about him was that he asked questions from sun up till sundown. And uh, one thing that I told him was, try to learn something new every day. Not only about football, but about life itself. And uh, you can only improve as a person and a player. Marino's first start marked the end of Woodstruck and the beginning of a new era in franchise history. Here's the snap. Marino drops the throw. Has time. Going deep up the sideline. Man down. Got it. 30, 25, 20. Duke will do another catch in. Touchdown. Marino threw for 322 yards and three touchdowns in an overtime loss to the Bills. The rookie went on to win the AFC passing title, and the Dolphins won the AFC East. He's a lot like Bonacani was as a linebacker. It didn't take long for the thought to go from the mind to the feet. With Marino, it doesn't take long for the thought to go from the mind to the arm to the feet, whatever it takes to evade the rush and let go of the football. Well, that second year in 1984 was just, you know, one of the great memories of my coaching career. He threw 48 touchdown passes, and the defenses didn't know what to do against Dan. They didn't know how to figure it out. They tried to blitz him, and we would beat the blitz, and then they'd lay back in coverage, and we'd beat the coverage, and, uh, you know, we had all of the answers. Throughout the 1980s, the Dolphins' dazzling array of offensive weapons enabled Marino to ascend to pro football's pantheon. I'm not the type of person who's going to stand there and tell you how good I am. I think I'm confident in what I do as a player, as a quarterback. You have to have confidence in yourself that you can do the job and that everybody around you can help you do your job. Future Hall of Famer Dwight Stevenson helped make Dan Marino one of the NFL's best protected quarterbacks. I've never seen a player in the NFL dominate a position the way Dwight Stevenson dominated his position of center for the Miami Dolphins. What he did was he redefined the way offensive linemen blocked defensive players. He used his hands, he was 260 pounds, not an overly large individual. Incredibly quick, incredibly strong. Dwight had a great ability for knowing when you were off balance. Opposing defenders were kept off balance as the offensive line gave Marino plenty of time to connect with an outstanding receiving core. It was my senior year we was playing in pit and we came out for pregame and they were down there throwing and we were down there throwing and I was just watching him throw. I was like, God, if I could get on the same team with him in the pros. <laughs> I'd hold Marino to Clayton as uh, worthy of consideration amongst the great combos of all time. Back to throw Marino. Here's a deep pattern down the far corner. It is Jim Clark. Touchdown. Great reception by Mark Clayton. Holy Toledo. Clayton was uh, an extraordinary athlete and receiver. The first thing I heard about Clayton was that he used to earn some extra money in college by betting people that he could leap a pool table lengthwise. He had that kind of ability. He could leap better than anybody ever been around. Great speed and quickness. And he was also a very tough receiver. Clayton and speed burner Mark Duper, number 85, were known as the Marx Brothers. But there was nothing comical about the way they torched opposing secondaries. Duper had uh, twin rockets strapped to his fanny. I mean, he could get down there. Uh, he was a sprinter in college. I'll tell you, when Duper gets in behind anybody, it's Katie by the door. He runs the 40 and 425, was a member of that Northwestern Louisiana State NCAA National Champion 440-yard relay team a couple of years ago. 
Mark Clayton and Mark Duper were outstanding. They were unstoppable. That was quite an arsenal Marino had to work with. You had Tony Nathan that was a major contributor. Bruce Hardy, the tight end, probably the best tight end in Dolphin history. Matt Moore was still skilled as both a slot receiver and coming out of the backfield. Matt Moore is very unheralded in my mind. To me, Matt Moore is the greatest receiver that's ever played for the Dolphins. Uh, people talk about Paul Warfield and they talk about the Marks brothers, and those are great players, and I love being teammates of all of them. But to me, Nat Moore was the most well-rounded receiver the Dolphins have ever had. A week later against NFC Western champion San Francisco, Marino connected often with Nat Moore, number 89, twice for touchdowns, as the Dolphins' 20-17 win secured their lock on first place. After an off year in 82, Nat Moore returned to the form that makes him the Dolphins' all-time leading receiver. While Moore added to his team record. This undersized strike force benefits from the presence of Nat Moore, number 89, the Dolphins' all-time receiving leader. In 1984, Corps also included outstanding performances by veterans Bruce Hardy and Nat Moore, whose receptions led to a Week 11 win against the Colts. Tight end Dan Johnson's touchdown keyed the Dolphins' victory in Buffalo a week later. Two straight victories stoked the fires for the main attraction of the season, a Monday night showdown in the Orange Bowl with the only undefeated team in pro football. Dolphin pride was on the line as Miami sought to protect its place in NFL history as the only team to produce a perfect season. Strategy was set. Forces were mobilized. The battle had begun. The Dolphins approached the vaunted Bears defense with a posture of defiance. Marino, a pocket passer, didn't rely on conventional tactics. He rolled away from the pressure and bombarded the opposition. was the Dolphins' most complete game of the season. Offense, defense, and special teams operated at peak efficiency. Miami trapped Bear quarterbacks a season high six times, with Mike Charles, the team sack leader, spearheading the attack. Judson and Glenn Blackwood, Miami's interception leader, produced key steals. To top it all off, Miami got the bounces too. From the 42. Here's the snap. Back he goes to throw. Under pressure. Ball is deflected in the air. With a 38-24 victory, the Dolphins became the only team to beat the eventual world champions in 1985. This rookie with a bright future can learn much from veteran Nat Moore, the Dolphins' all-time leading receiver. Over his 13 seasons, Moore has logged more than four miles in receiving yardage. Second down goal to go. Bootleg. He wants to throw. In the clear. Has a man. Touchdown. Nat Moore.
77-yard drive. Going back to the score. Dick, the Dolphins will try to probe right up the middle of that Jet defensive line, and if they can hammer up the middle, they can force the Jets to do some things they don't want to do. So far, they're not getting much. Wide open is Ned Moore, and he's on the ball to the 20, the 10, touchdown Miami. 66 yards, Marino to Moore. down in a hurry as the veteran Nat Moore able to find a little opening and Marino just rifling that ball to him. Moore is just going to sneak in behind Bobby Jackson. Safety's coming over but he just flat out runs Kenny Shroy right there and it's Bobby Jackson coming from behind number 40 and gathering ground on him but unable to catch him before he waltzed into the end zone. So Uwe von Schaman will try the extra point. A 66-yard touchdown. It's the longest pass play of the season for Miami. And the Dolphins strike quickly. It took them less than three minutes to get the lead as Nat Moore finding a crease in the defense and a perfect throw by Marino. Marino's seventh touchdown of the year, and boy, he just zips that ball into the gap. A good job of picking the open man and getting the ball to him. Troy couldn't make the tackle. Jackson... strike first with a minute 20 seconds to play in the opening period here we have it you know it looks like Glasgow Barry Krause and Johnny Cook we're all looking at each other there as Nat Moore just ran a little slant in pattern in the middle and of course he's got Nathan outside well that's good news for Miami Dolphin fans New England beating Buffalo 21 to 7 the Bills were tied with Miami at the start of today's play so a victory by Miami would give them sole possession of first place in that tight AFC Eastern race Second and five. Going for six. Wide open is Nat Moore. Touchdown. The veteran Moore almost led too far. Marino kissed as he threw the ball, and he hits his veteran receiver a 24-yard score. Marino continues to amaze, and Nat Moore, who's really become more of a control receiver, found some openings on the right-hand side and breaks away from number 42, Ronnie Lott. Marino looking almost all the way at Moore on that play, away briefly, but watch this great catch by Moore, right off the fingertips, controlled it, the, the official right on top of him, keeping an eye on him to make sure he did indeed have control of that football. That sign is for the San Francisco fans saying, hey, you can't win at home. They've won only one game in the last two years here, so they're trying to pretend that they're not at home and want their team to be thinking they're on the road in the Orange Bowl. Well, Uva Von Schaman ties it up with the extra point. Oh, was Nat Moore open, and it's a seven all time. Just how open was Nat Moore? Putting a little move right there. Lott expecting him short. He tried to chuck him and missed the chuck. Boy, you can't afford to let a speedster like Moore lose like that. His fourth touchdown catch of the year. The game is even. Thrown for touchdowns, 24 yards on a gain of five. As Marino going without a huddle, 122 left in the half. You remember that Marino called the timeout a few moments ago. They may wish they hadn't as they try to go in a hurry up offense and beat the clock. 115 and counting down. Clayton to the left, Duper to the right. Down the middle, touchdown, Matt Moore. He's two for two. Find the open receiver get him the ball. What a great pass. White Hicks and Carlton Williams and or Car Carlton Williams and the men who are defending on that play but great protection here. You'll see Dean come in from the left side of your screen and Marino just ducks to the side and gets away from him. That's the kind of movement a good quarterback has to have and look at that strike. Saw the open man and within just a fraction of a second that ball was on its way and a perfect strike. That's 
that's the kind of thing that has earned Marino such great respect from not only his own coach, but other coaches around the league. He has the strength and size to break away from Dean. Smaller quarterbacks might have gone down there. Then it spots the open man. It wasn't a perfect spiral, but the ball was there so quickly, and Moore has his second touchdown. 19 yards on the throw. Uva Von Schaman trying to tie it up for Miami. He's got it. And it's San Francisco's turn. Joe Montana has all three timeouts, and he'll have 64 seconds to work with when we return. He's been intercepted only four times. He and Montana, both in the column, throwing the football today. It's 14 all as Von Schaman will kick it off. And goal to go. The Dolphins knocking once again. Play action. Good pickup block there by Bennett. And in the back of the end zone is Matt Moore, who just came into the ball game. But that Look at it from the ground level. I don't think Matt, Matt Moore was his primary receiver. He was trying to hit a guy in the flat. He wasn't open. He looked to his backup receiver, and here comes Matt Moore across the middle. Hey, that's some good camera work. You saw now, Marino has connected for three touchdown passes. This one to the veteran Matt Moore. We'll be returning to Buffalo. One guy and a Rollins not roughing on the other. I'm sorry about that. You're not trying to stir up some trouble now, are you? Oh, no, not <laughs> me. I'm one of the nice guys. 11-25 left in this ball game. Marino 23 of 30 for 263 yards. And, of course, he has the two touchdown passes. One to Clayton, one to Duper. He's back to throw once again. He has time. Looks over the middle. Wide open. Nat Moore. Touchdown, Miami. Historic touchdown, number 57 in his career, ties Larry Zunka for the Miami Dolphins club record. And that's why you're seeing quite a reception for Nat Moore, and that's why he hasn't surrendered that football. He's keeping that one because I got a hunch it's going in the trophy case. Well, you would certainly think so. Very gutty call here, but I was almost expecting it. Third down and one foot to go, one yard to go. Marino, a lot of confidence, throws it up to Nat Moore. And as you said, Nat Moore has indicated that he will re he may retire after the season. And you know that's a big one. What kind of jump was that, Nat? <laughs> Extra point attempt splits the middle of the uprights. And so Marino has fired three touchdown strikes. We're in the fourth quarter, 11-11 to play, and the Dolphins lead 21-3. Foxborough, the house, could be the house of broken dreams for the Dolphins, but he flat out forgot the snap count. Is that It'll happen to every great quarterback. It's happened to Marino, and it happened again. You just go up there thinking about a lot of different things, some of which we've been talking about, and you go up there and you say, I think it's on one, but you say, hut, and the ball doesn't come up. <laughs> and, you, and you know then. <laughs> They're down, goal to go, the ball back at the 18-yard line. Jensen is into the offensive set. Ned Moore. Eighteen yards. An eighty yard closing drive with six seconds remaining in the half. It was a very impressive drive by the Dolphins. Nat Moore catching his 58th touchdown for the Miami Dolphins. That's a new record. Breaking the tie with Larry Zonko. Here's the extra point. Uva Von Schaman. Don Strock to hold. And it's blocked. And a flag is down. Julius Adams got the block. Coming inside. Tripping. Number 84 offense declined. Point was unsuccessful. Penalty call on Bruce Hardy. I don't know if the kick was low. It had penetration. The snap was perfect. Doesn't seem to me to be much penetration. Certainly not enough. The ball is just kicked low. Everybody has their hands up. 85, Julius Adams makes the block, but the ball was kicked a little bit low. Let's go back and take a look at the touchdown. Marino, pretty good protection. Kind of sidearms the ball. Nat Moore gets inside of 47, Dombrowski. Dombrowski had help deep. 
If he wouldn't have let that more on the inside, he would never caught that slant pass. Good route by Nat Moore, poor coverage by Dombrowski. Shows you what a 33-year-old receiver can do. He reads everything that the defense is doing. He's been there many a times before. A crafty veteran who has really swallowed a little pride this year in, in the, the advent of uh, Mark Clayton and Mark Duper coming on and doing well. And that's getting an opportunity to play a little bit more now. And he's really a first-class man. He's done a lot to develop the two young receivers. And uh, when he retires which he says he may after this season, uh, they're going to miss his leadership. I like his statement also that I don't deserve to start. They deserve to start. Duper and Clayton, they're playing better football than I am. So within field goal range for Uwe Von Schaumann. Clayton, seven catches, 99 yards, and a touchdown. There it is. His second touchdown reception of the ball game. His career 59. Charlie, one of the reasons Nat Moore is so valuable is he can play so many positions. Here you see him in the backfield as a halfback. He's going to come straight down the field, make a little move here, and go straight down. He's going to be open. The safety is going to come this way. He'll beat the two linebackers lined up just on the other line of the scrimmage. Makes a little move and goes straight up the field. One of the reasons why Nat Moore is so valuable to the Dolphins. We talked about his leadership, about his big plays over the years, but Tony Nathan has been hurt. He steps in, plays in the backfield. Kick is good. The extra point is good. 37 to 24. Miami leads with 8-24. Left to go. They'll give him some help now and then, but Green's going to have to do it on his own several times throughout the day. Reno not starting that well. 205, 34 yards. Third down and eight. Casanova. He is offside. Free play for the Dolphins. There it is. Matt Moore. Touchdown Miami. And it will stand up. 37 yards. Fifty-five yards on the drive in four plays. What you're going to see is a double zone. The area down the middle of the field, there will be nobody in the middle. Nat Moore will come from the right side, get in the middle. Now, when Gassineau jumps offside, Marino knows he's got a free play. So it gives him the confidence to go ahead and throw this ball over the sharp people between the two deep safeties you'll see coming to your picture right there. And for Nat Moore, that is the 60th touchdown of his career. For Marino, add one more. 28 touchdown passes. Uvabon Shaman with the point after, and it is good. And so the Miami Dolphins striking through the air out in front of the New York Jets by a score of 7-0 with now seven minutes and 38 seconds left to go. We're in the first quarter. A three, second down and 20 of the 24. Yesterday, Joe Gardy, defensive coordinator, said we have a few new wrinkles and surprises for Marino. That time, a little safety blitz was not blocked, got in his face, made him throw the ball very quickly. The Dolphins have controlled the ball for the last five minutes and two seconds. He moved 59 yards in 10 plays from the shotgun. Here he is, he's open. And does a cartwheeling 360 in the air. Kurt Springs, 20 yards, is the man who hit Nat Moore. This was unbelievable, the way Nat Moore, right here, he'll go downfield and catch the ball here, and then does his pirouette in the air. Unbelievable throw and catch by Nat Moore. Open, Marino sees the entire field. And around he goes. Oh, around and around. It's carousel time. He caught one earlier, went up in the air like this, and fumbled it. This time, the Jets don't shake it loose. They had every reason to. Nat Moore just holds on with both hands. Down goes Nat Moore. Nat Moore making a fine effort. Jeffrey Dale, 37. Danny Walters, 23. And when you're in a pinch, you have to go to the veteran. Here's Nat Moore. I said earlier, he's the most 
crafty receiver I've ever watched. Just take a look at him here. First of all, he makes a move to beat the defender. And then he dances, bounces, leaps, and finally pirouettes in the end zone. Just two years and four games, and that's the kind of offense that has excited the Dolphins. Well, right down to the man himself on the sidelines, Don Shula, since Marino took over. There's a lot of mutual respect in our conversations with Stevenson and Logan separately in the last couple of days. Uh, they uh, think highly of each other. Irvin Randall is into the ball game at linebacker. First down as he had stepped out of bounds before he fumbled the ball. Marino to the corner. Touchdown. Matt Moore. in the corner of the end zone. Marino found him and fired it home. Tim, one thing that's real impressive, you notice in this pass play, Dan Marino is really taking his time. He's being patient, allowing the play to develop. Now he's going to look. He sees Matt Moore wide open in the corner. There it is, TD. That's the way to play football Dolphins style. Juan Ravez in to attempt the point after. Srock is the holder. The Dolphins have jumped into a 7 to nothing lead, going 48 yards in six plays after blocking the Tampa Bay punt. They haven't had a 100-yard rusher in any one game yet this season. Yet they did run the ball well last week against Buffalo, but that was Buffalo, not Chicago. Second and eight. Matt Moore comes in, number 89, the veteran wide receiver to join Mark Clayton and Mark Cooper. Greeno, Matt Moore. Moore takes it in. 33-yard touchdown. They picked up the blitz. Marino was right on target. And Matt Moore shook loose from one tackler and took it in from 33 yards out. But well, here you see Marino's going to throw it out to the left to Nat Moore. He simply outruns Gary Fensick. You see Fensick almost getting picked off in the right, picked off in the right side of your screen. And Nat cuts it back. This is a near clip right here coming up on the screen, but, well, I'm glad he didn't call it. So he far, Marino has had time to throw the football. That, of course, we all knew was the key coming into the night. But we are early in the game. Revey, putting the uprights. With 11.09, remaining in the first quarter, the Dolphins lead seven to nothing. Need to go. I agree with Joe to one respect. Why using? You've locked up home field advantage, but you have to use him sooner or later. But he's going to be your man to take you into the playoffs and hopefully to the Super Bowl. Dwight Stevenson remains the center, even though in pain with the right shoulder injury for the Dolphins. Marino gets the pressure, but he gets it to Nat Moore. Marino has been buffeted about, but he's kept his calm and his cool, and he's firing strikes, and the Bears are in deep trouble. Well, here you see Nat Moore going to the right of your skiing screen. Maybe you'll see him, and he just happens to fool Wilbur Marshall, number 58, beats him to the outside. Second-year linebacker out of Florida, couldn't get on that coverage. He catches tonight for the 12-year veteran Nat Moore. Three times he's come down with the football. 61 yards and a couple of touchdowns. 
Ravage with the conversion. Hysteria here in the Orange Bowl. Nat Moore told us last year he was definitely going to retire. He was a star player in this league. They made him a third receiver, a backup receiver. He didn't think his ego could handle that. He said he would retire. But he realized that the way they play ball this in, in the, the day, they play situation substitutions. Everybody's a starter on a team. Being the third receiver, you're just about a starter. You had 43 receptions and six touchdowns in that position last year. And this year, he's lighting up his team, coming off the bench, doing the job. A good team wins when it has to win, and they win in the Orange Bowl. The Dolphins are 15 and 3 in Monday Night Football games at the Orange Bowl. Interesting to note, we mentioned it earlier, the Bears are 5 and 11 on Monday Night Football, but they're 0 and 8 on the road with Monday Night Football. Points. You good have cost. to make those plays. Excellent coverage. Good cost seven because now with nine seconds and still the timeout remaining, Miami is going after the touchdown one more time. You're going to have to get it up fast. You're going to have to get the ball up fast. There it is. Touchdown. Matt Moore. Marino with his third touchdown pass of the game. 25 on the year. The reason for that, it's tough on Green Bay. They have to double to the outside. He's got a one-on-one -on -one right now, but watch it. He's clearly open. Look at the throw. The throw is perfect. The defender should have stayed with Nat Moore into the end zone as soon as... One of the assistant coaches with Cleveland, his assistant head coach, spent time here with Miami. He's talking to him yesterday. He said, if they get down close, we know Marino likes Rose. We're going to double him every time. Moore in the backfield, Don. This is Marino's 37th pass of the game coming out. And Marino looks. He fires. He's got Nat Moore for a touchdown. Miami's in the end zone for the first time. It's a 21 to 9 game. Moore's eighth touchdown catch. Watch what he does. He runs the out fake. Right bites on it. Marino's got time to stay with it. That's as tough a drive as Miami's had to orchestrate to get in the end zone this season. Well done by the Dolphins. 13th play was a lucky one for Miami as they get it in on the throw to Nat Moore. And the extra point by Raves is up and good. And so with 5-13 to play now in the third, third quarter, it's a 21-10 game. Natalie Mark season injuries last year. Now there's the quickest 100 touchdowns. And you see... This is Marino's 44th game today. Unitas, it took him 53 to throw 100. Marino on target. By the end of their careers, it's very possible that the two quarterbacks on the field today may hold virtually every passing record in the NFL. In the third quarter, Chargers lead at 33 to 14. Matt Moore set in the slot to the left side. Bring the tight end back toward the action. And throw outside for a touchdown to Nat Moore. Oh, what a beautiful play. Moore set in the slot with the tight end outside of him. He moves back inside, and the pass goes back out to Moore for the score. Uh, it's called a pick, Jay. <laughs> it's, not, it's usually not legal, but if you do it right, it is. And this is a touchdown, and Nat Moore is the craftiest uh, wide receiver I've ever seen play the game. And he knows all the tricks. Dan Marino asked him to perform one here, and he does. Yes. Inside, you see that more all by himself, but what you don't see in the screen there is Bruce Hardy, who came inside looking for the ball. He just happened to wipe out a couple of defenders. The extra point by Fouad Reves is good. They beat Walters and Bird for the touchdown. 33-21, charge.
and San Diego sacked him four times. That's the eighth play of the drive. Third and goal at the four. when you send in four wide receivers, especially against the Colts secondary, as we said, coming on the, uh, the ball game. So many injuries in that secondary. It's tough for them to match up. And the extra point attempt by Squad Revey. It is no good. Squad Revey missing on the extra point, so the Dolphins lead it 13 to 7. Five yards is the longest run for scrimmage this year by the Miami Dolphins. Mm, that's, this, this team has not run the ball well for the last three or four years. Relied mainly on that gentleman's arm. Second down and 10 is the 38. Well, he hit his man in the numbers on the last Yes, play. he did. Shotgun formation for Marino. Wide open. Matt Moore. Matt Moore. Touchdown. everything in Dolphins receiving history and he adds a 38 yard touchdown to his credit. It's 13 nothing Dolphins. His fifth touchdown reception of the 1986 season he was in the middle of the zone here's the extra point then the replay and Rabiz hits it 14 nothing Miami you pay so much attention as a defense to the guys on the outside. There's Nett Moore. This is zone all the way. And it looks like Abraham, 56, just doesn't quite get back in coverage where he should be. And Marino able to get it right over a linebacker's head. Nett Moore can still run. He can still bust the coverage. And he did that time. Well, the center of the Atlanta. Atlanta will be tough. New Orleans is coming on. And they're still alive out of the NFC West. Then they're in Los Angeles, and they close on Monday night. We'll be here for the New England Patriots, December the 22nd. Tough schedule for them, but tonight they have put it together really for the first time this year. Second and seven from the 22, and here comes the blitz, and Marino leads it, and he hits Moore, and Moore has a touchdown. Marino read it beautifully, but more importantly, his, read his receivers were reading with him. Matt Moore picked it up as quickly as he did. It was a safety blip, and Marino knew he was going to get individual coverage on his outside people. Matt Moore read it with him, and it was beautifully executed. It was a free man coming in on Marino, but he backed away. He had the quick arm. He could release the ball even while he was going back, and he gets it in to Moore for the six points. They are playing flawlessly. And not only that, all of their drives have been the length of the field. They've all been 80 or more. Strock holds, Gervais kicks. And the Dolphins look like the Dolphins of 72. When you move the ball on an 80-yard drive, uh, you are doing something right. And the Dolphins are doing everything right. That time, the Jets, who likes to blitz when their opposition gets inside their 20-yard line, brought the safety blitz. And Marino has picked it up right here. There's a man in his face, but even backwards, he's able to flip it with enough strength to get it to Matt Moore, who reads with him. Great coordination between Moore and Marino, and this is a shocker. Came to the Dolphins in 1974. Came down the road from Gainesville, another Florida Gator. 13 good seasons here. All of the points. And I'm sure they are thinking back to the drawing board, but this has got to hurt down the line, considering the Jets schedule against the Rams, the 49ers in Pittsburgh and Cincinnati. And New England breathing right down their back. New England will be one game back after tonight. Third and nine, and it's Marino. Puffing and then throwing. Oh, that's good. Matt Moore, penalty marker down. No matter where 
it goes. That is beautiful. Marino pump fakes to the left, pulls the defender off, and blasts it in there to Nat Moore. They picked them up. Miami did it once too, but if you can't defend if you, with 12 men on the field, how in the world are you going to do it with 11? Dan Marino, in his last three games against the Jets over two years, has thrown 13 touchdown passes. Moore with his second touchdown pass of the night. Marino has thrown 10 touchdown passes this season against the Jets. And it's not over. Again, that Moore staying alive, working with Marino. They know they're always alive with Marino. They never give up, even though Marino had looked initially off to his left to Pruitt. He pulled it back in and unloaded one, and Moore was there. Super effort by Marino. Again, he had the time to do it. For Marino. As we come to you from the Orange Bowl, Al Michaels and Frank Gifford, and for those of you still with us,